Welcome everybody to what is going to be the first ever episode of Coaster News Roundup. I am your host, Carrick from Coaster Hour, and for this video series, I will be going into the latest news and rumors in the roller coaster and theme park industry. So for this first episode, I'm going to go into a few things just about how this series sort of started and go into a few other sort of details that I normally wouldn't in a normal episode. Usually I'd just go straight into the news, but I figured since this was a first one, I should kind of explain some things. So this is going to be a weekly to bi-weekly news video series. And pretty much how it formed was out of my Coaster Time live streams, which some of you may have seen, um, some of you may have not yet, but that is where I used to cover the news. But the news segment got too long, so I decided to make this new series that is more video uh, based rather than live stream based to sort of um, cover the news. Uh, I think it's going to just work out a lot better. So that's pretty much how the series came to be. And I know that video series like this have been done or attempted before. These sort of news recaps um, have been done before. And what's going to make mine stand apart is that I'm going to go into more international and perhaps more obscure pieces of news compared to other channels. I know a lot of channels sort of cover stuff that happens here in North America. I'm, of course, from here in the U.S., but I want to go into some other things that are happening at parks around the world. So that's going to be some of the... Um, things that sort of make this series stand out compared to some other ones that have existed. And this series will have a podcast type feel. It's going to be mostly unscripted. I have like a set of notes that I'm looking at here, but pretty much unscripted. So uh, I wanted to say that. And this series is obviously new. So if you have any suggestions or criticism of this first episode of Coaster News Roundup, let me know so I can sort of plug that in for future episodes. And um if you want to help and support this series, this is, like I said, new, and it's actually a pretty massive undertaking by me. Pretty major change for the channel, but I'm really excited for it. But if you could like and subscribe, that would be, like, the best way to help me out, help me grow the series, help me grow the channel. And if you want me to go above and beyond, uh, or if you want to go above and beyond to support the series, uh, sharing the series with those you may you think may be interested would be a massive help. So that would be much appreciated if you could share this first episode of Coaster News Roundup. That'll help the, uh, the series grow quite a bit. Now I'm going to go a little more into like how the format of this Coaster News Roundup is going to look like. And so each news topic I'm going to pretty much call its own segment. And each segment will have a timestamp. So if you're only interested in certain sort of news topics, certain segments, those will be in the timestamps. It'll be for every episode. And for that matter, all episodes will be going in a playlist called Coaster News Roundup. So I wanted to mention that. But for the actual format of these um, actual videos, the first three segments usually are going to be ride openings, construction updates, and ride closures. This will be sort of a montage of photos without commentary until the end of each one. If I find something interesting, you'll kind of see that play out with the uh, ride openings, construction updates, and ride closures of this episode. You'll see what that kind of looks like. And then the rest of the segments will pretty much be full commentary. So that's pretty much going to be how that's going to go. If you're a little confused, I'll it'll make a lot more sense when we get into it. And I wanted to go into one last thing here also, and that is the news sources. Like, where do I get the news that I'm going to talk about? Well, some of the best places I uh, I would say for the news where I gather it, where I get it from, and where to follow are a few places that I'll mention here. So the Coaster Force forums are really good if you're looking for coaster construction updates, ride construction updates, and news and rumors. That's a great place to look. The Theme Parks forums, that's like a great place for construction updates. Screamscape, that's where I get a lot of the rumors that I discuss on here, but they also oftentimes will have pieces of news I didn't see elsewhere. So... I wanted to mention that the roller coaster subreddit also usually is um, pretty good at breaking uh, pieces of news, especially stuff that kind of wouldn't be reported otherwise because anyone can go on there and uh, talk about what they found. So that's another great place to look. And then I'm actually part of the Airtime Thrills Discord server, um, as in I'm part of the news reporting, the news uh, system they have over there. They have a great news channel that... Um, I contribute to 
And that's honestly, I think, the best place to just sort of keep up with the news. Even if you don't like actually like to use Discord and interact with people in it, um, I would recommend going into that server just to kind of see the news because I think that's where the server really shines. And um, that's where about probably, I would say, 90% of the stuff I've covered is from. So uh, I would highly recommend checking that out. And there's also a lot of social media um, pages that you can follow. But one of the ones I want to shout out and highlight is if you're on Instagram, Coaster Hub is pretty good. Um, and actually, you can also follow me on Instagram. I'll post on my story some things that I find interesting as well. So um, just wanted to go into the news sources. Um, that's something I'm surprised doesn't get asked a lot just from my previous sort of um, talking about news. People don't really ask me where I get it, but I would figure I'd mention it just so people would know what to follow and where to follow um, if they were interested in that sort of thing. Now, with all of that out of the way, we're going to dive straight into the news, and that'll start off with our first news segment, which will be our ride openings. Next, we are going to go into our construction updates. Next, we are going to go into our ride closures. Now, there are three ride closures I wanted to highlight and talk about. The first of which is Sequoia Magic Loop. This is the SNS Scream and Squirrel coaster that was at Gardaland in Italy. There were only three of these ever made, three of these model. Um, so that is definitely something to uh, note. There's only now one that even exists now. Um, with now this one having demolition permits filed, we kind of figured something was happening. If you've been kind of following this coaster has been taken off the website for some time it got taken off the map several months ago and so it's no surprise that this coaster is indeed getting removed but we finally have confirmation on it i had heard pretty mixed things in terms of ride experience but it still was a unique coaster so um, in that sense it is unfortunate to see the other ride i want to talk about is phoenix at bush gardens tampa so if you saw on the opening and closing timeline it says that it closed in 2018. That's what my research found. It has not operated since. This is the Intamin Looping Starship at Busch Gardens Tampa. And um, it's pretty surprising that it's just been sitting there for basically uh, almost five years at this point. But good on Busch Gardens Tampa for finally uh, getting rid of it. It's you know not a great thing to just have a ride sitting around not operating for several years. So um, even though it's unfortunate that the ride has to close and uh, is in the current state of being demolished, 
at least they are finally getting to it, so I'll give them props there. And then for Mock Tower, this one was sort of heavily rumored. I talked about it on my Coaster Time streams um, in the past, how it was rumored that it would be leaving in the near future. And those rumors ended up being true. It's going to be closing on January 8th. So if you're in a local area or you're visiting the park anytime in the near future, um, you still have a chance to ride it. There's still an opportunity to do it. But this ride basically would have only operated for a little more than 11 years. It was a Moser drop tower that was pretty unique because it actually had um, two sort of um, systems it could sort of run. It could run as a drop tower and it could also run as an observation tower. So it was kind of two, a two-in-one sort of deal. But supposedly it wasn't a very comfortable or very enjoyable drop tower and it had a ton of maintenance issues. So I guess not too surprising to see it go, but once again, another sort of unique ride. And um, in that sense, it is unfortunate to see it go. Next, I'm going to go into train reveals. And for this episode, we only have one. And so how train reveals are going to work and also what's going to be the next segment name and logo reveals is basically I'm going to give each sort of uh, thing that was revealed an initial reaction score on a scale from one to 10. So one being like really like just absolutely like hall of shame level bad and then 10 being like absolutely elite like just amazing so um I, i'll actually probably have a scale up um of what that one to ten scale looks like so um i i'll pretty much i guess defer to that but with that being said for our train reveals this week we only had luna at leesburg but this is the new vicoma family boomerang coming to the park in sweden and um, like I'm doing initial reaction score because sometimes trains look a little better or a little worse in real life. So like I said, that's why I'm calling it initial reaction. But um, I really like this train. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I think it looks great. The colors look really nice. I like the blue and kind of gold look it has. Um, I think it looks really good. And it fits in well for the sort of space theme, like vintage space uh, sci-fi theme and like going to the moon because that's like what the ride is about so I do really like it um, looks like a rocket looks relatively aerodynamic so I think it actually looks really nice and especially for the ride model I did take a look at the other trains most of them are pretty basic so this one is actually a nice change of pace this one looks really good so definitely props to Leesburg and Vekoma for um, doing a great job with this train I think it looks really good and um, I mean, it, it should be a, a thing that sort of elevates the ride in appearance for sure overall. So um, I really I really think it looks quite good. Next, we're going to go into our name and or logo reveals. And our first one is going to be the b and wing going to Chessington World of Adventures in England, which is Mandrill Mayhem. So that is going to be the name of the b and wing coaster. This hasn't been officially announced by the park, but through... Um, trademarks we do know that this will be the name and we do have a logo for it I won't show it on here just because the park hasn't officially released it but I'll have a link to where I found it so you can check it out that way they actually also showed that um, their uh, rumored Miami ride is going to be called Mamba Strike and the rumored jumper ride is going to be called Ostrich Stampede those rides will all be part of their world of Jumanji area coming in 2023 but for this I'll specifically focus on Mandrill Mayhem and I'm going to give this name and logo an initial reaction of a 6 out of 10, which is about adequate. And this one's kind of polarizing for me. There are some good and bad things about it. I do see where the logo can kind of tie in with the train design. We haven't seen what the trains like will look like, but I can see how it can fit in with the theme. And it looks like that um, the wing seating is sort of going to be... Um, theme to like the the um, mandrel sort of has outstretched arms and so that's going to be kind of how the design goes that at least is kind of what it looks like based off the logo and um you know it is themed to a monkey so you know that is pretty fun i guess um it is admittedly a pretty weird sort of decision for a theme um for a wing coaster usually you think birds but i mean I'm not necessarily um, like against the monkey theme. I think it should be pretty fun. 
Um, there's sort of one thing that's a little weird with this name, though, and that is that Chessington already has an attraction called Temple of Mayhem. I did see this get sort of talked about uh, on social media, that it might be a little confusing now that they have two rides with Mayhem in the name. And I even wrote down here that perhaps a name like Mandrill Madness would have been a better choice because it kind of gets the same idea across. Um, but really, this name is really weird, really out there, still pretty creative. I want to see how well it's integrated into the theming and into the train because I think that's really going to decide how good this is. So I'm kind of giving it a 6 out of 10 for now, which is sort of a we'll wait and see what happens. But I think as it stands, it's fine. The next coaster name that got revealed recently was actually Regina 2, which is the intimate wooden coaster at Tobu Zoo in Japan that is receiving a GCI overhaul, kind of in the style of Ghost Rider is the thing I could most compare it to. And um, this for this sort of ride name, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 along with the logo. And that's once again kind of an adequate grade. It's a pretty basic name, but it gets the point across that this is indeed the return of Regina, a coaster that has not been open since 20, um, 2019. So I think it works in that way. The logo is pretty much the same as the original, but it just has the extra now two and the Italian word for two, which is do. So you have that in there. Um, I will say I'm a little disappointed with the name choice because it does appear they're going to give this right a little bit of a steampunk retheme which i don't believe was part of the original sort of theme i guess or aesthetic um so i figured they would go with something maybe a little more original but once again i think this is fine it gets the point across that this is a return of a coaster um at the park so i think it is pretty much adequate for that reason the next sort of news topic we're going to go into is probably the biggest sort of news that came out of this last week and that is the Six Flags Fiesta Texas 2023 announcement. So Six Flags Fiesta Texas had their 2023 announcement on the Saturday before the one that I'm recording on today. But um, basically they got to announce a lot of things. A lot of people are focused on their two new sort of big attraction additions, which are their seven family water slides from Pro Slide and their new Skyline attractions doing Spaghetti Bowl Coaster. But they actually announced a lot more, and I'll kind of list them off. So for 2023, Fiesta Texas is getting a new roller coaster coffee location. So if you like coffee, uh, that should be pretty exciting. They're going to have a new Coca-Cola VIP lounge, which is basically where people can hang out, have snacks. Um, so that's going to be happening. They're going to be adding a new esports complex, which was a bit of a surprising move. We've seen Cedar Point do this, so... Perhaps we will see some more major parks do this, maybe not, but definitely kind of interesting to see them uh, investing in something like that. They are removing their fender bender bumper cars, which we already sort of showed in the ride closures. That's going to be making space for their new Skyline attractions doing spaghetti, Pischetti Bull Coaster. They're going to refurbish their railroad train and actually reintroduce a second train onto that ride. Um, I've heard great things about the railroad there, so that is good to see. And then for their coasters that currently exist, Iron Rattler is going to get a third train, increased capacity, awesome to see. Uh, I have not been to the park, but I'm sure that's going to do wonders for that ride. Boomerang, it's going to have two new trains. We'll only operate one at a time, but the two trains should make it so um, it shouldn't really have hardly any downtime. And these two new trains they're getting will have best restraints, and the boomerang will just have general ride enhancements such as system upgrades and things of that sort. Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster will actually be getting new trains with Jersey's Devil style restraints. Plus, once again, sort of general system enhancements, which those new trains, I've done it on Wonder Woman. The shoulder straps are uh, Wonder Woman at Magic Mountain, I should say. The shoulder straps on that one are a lot better than say the prototypes like Railblazer, which I've experienced. So I will say that is an improvement. So I think overall it's gonna be a more comfortable ride. So I like to see that. And then as I mentioned earlier, the two big additions, their water park, they're getting a new kids area, which will have seven family water slides from Pro Slide. You can see the picture here. Um, if um, It's actually pretty cool. They're basically making a bunch of miniature versions of existing slides. I really like that idea. I think that's really smart and really clever. 
And then we're also getting, of course, the sort of, I guess, uh, main addition of all of these, which will be that Skyline Attractions doing Pischetti Bowl Coaster, which will actually feature Aurora Lighting, which is um, their new sort of lighting package that can be installed on the coasters. Um, looks really cool. They showed it off at IAPA this year. It looks awesome. So I'm really excited to see how that looks at, like in, um, in uh, actuality because it looks great from the concept and their model also looked really good. So that's great. And some takeaways I have from this. I think this is awesome for Skyline Attractions. I did an interview with Tyler Mullins, one of the design engineers over there. So, um, and we actually talked about the Pisgetti Bull Coaster. So it's great to see that they're getting their first sort of dueling model out there. Um, and especially at a big park like this, I think that's really good. And I hope this goes great. And I also think it's a good addition for over Texas. They don't have a true... I guess they do sort of have a kiddie coaster with their, um, I think, Streamliner is what it's called. Um, but this will add another one, and it'll be dueling, so that's obviously pretty interesting. Um, you love to see the investment into this park. They keep getting it. They got Dr. Diabolicals last year, and so they they keep getting it, which is great to see. Um, a lot of great improvements, it appears, coming to this park. And as I mentioned with Wonder Woman, the restraints and new trains on this are going to be big, so... Um, I think it's going to help the ride a lot, and um, I'm excited to experience it with the new restraints, um, but obviously the original prototype layout whenever I get to experience it. That definitely should be interesting to try out, having done Railblazer. So overall, really good announcement. Always love it when Fiesta Texas does an announcement. They seem to knock it out of the park with their actual presentation as well. I got to give Jeffrey Siebert props on that. It was a great presentation, and... Uh, their additions will, are looking really good. So uh, overall, uh, really good outlook for Fiesta Texas for 2023. Our next new segment will be talking about yet another coaster edition that was announced recently, this time at Rasti Land in Germany. They have announced a new SBF Visa family shuttle coaster coming to the park in 2023 for their 50th anniversary. So this is, when I talk about smaller parks, I do kind of want to go into them a little more just so... Um, I can sort of show that these aren't just the park that's getting like this coaster kind of go into them a little more. So Rossi land itself, it's more of a family oriented park. They currently have three coasters. This will be their fourth. Um, but their three coasters they currently have are Octorbon, which is their 1991 Vekoma junior coaster, Holta di Polta, which is a 2019 SBF Visa micro coaster. And then they just added Stronado last year, which was a 2022 SBF Visa mixed coaster, which has the hamster wheel. So um, this is actually pretty interesting. They've been adding coasters quite a bit. That's four coasters, not four coasters, but three coasters in the last pretty much four seasons. So definitely pretty interesting to see that there. Um, good to see that. And some other standard attractions they have is they have their go-karts, which some people thought that was what this was going to be, another go-kart track, but no, it ended up being a new coaster. They also had a pirate-themed dark ride, a log flume, a rapids ride that has a whirlpool, which is pretty unique, and they have this powered bobcart attraction that you don't really see at too many places, so they do have some pretty interesting sort of standard attractions, with, especially with that rapids ride and the powered bobcart. Those are pretty cool. And as for a little bit more about this uh, family shuttle coaster, as I mentioned earlier, it is going to be manufactured by SBF Visa. Despite it having a near identical layout to the Gerslauer family shuttle coaster model, you can think of rides like Rewind Racers at Adventure City or Boomerang at Luna Park in Sydney, Australia. Um, it has a layout that is pretty much almost identical to those, so that's kind of interesting. Pretty basic layout though, so um, I... Don't really think it's like anything that's that crazy in terms of like copying or anything like that. And the trains will be themed to tractors. They also said that the track color is also to be determined. Um, for my sort of thoughts on the overall addition for the park, I've not been there myself, but um, for a family oriented park, this seems like a really nice addition. Um, and it will likely be the new standout coaster in the park because it is a little bit of a larger scale compared to what they have there. So. I think for that reason, it, it makes sense, and it's a really nice sort of addition for, like I said, a more family-oriented park. 
Sticking in Germany, we have our next piece of news, which is about Fraser Park Plone, which is receiving a new smaller family attraction in 2023. However, details about it are really scarce. Pretty much there's not really anything they've given about this attraction, so they're more sort of teasing it. But we do know they are getting something for 2023. Now, as I did with Rossini Land, because this park isn't one that's super well known or talked about amongst like sort of the community, I'll kind of discuss it. So this park is most well known for having Dynamite, which is a 2019 Mach Big Dipper, along with El Toro, which is a 2009 GCI wooden coaster. But they actually also have four other coasters at the park, including a 2011 Zero Force coaster called Poseidon a 2015 mock powered coaster that actually also doubles as a dark ride called Miniwa, a 2017 SBF Visa spinning coaster called Draken Werble, and a 2006 SBF Visa Wacky Worm called Family Coaster. This park, I actually also watched a Canopy Coaster review on it. You can make sure to check that out. It's really good. But he mentioned that the park was mostly either themed to the Old West or fairy tales. It was heavily wooded. And many of their rides have good theming or dark ride sections. So that's certainly pretty interesting. And as for the family ride itself, um, it was kind of hard to research like their additions. Um, details on opening years for any non-coaster attractions was pretty much impossible to find, at least for me. Um, but I do think it is possible that this park could be getting some sort of family or kiddie coaster. Because all six of the park's operating coasters, they've been built since 2006. And the longest coaster drought they have had since 2006 is four years. And we're actually coming up on that. Dynamite opened in 2019. So a kitty or even potentially a family coaster is not out of the question. Based off the description, I'm going to just, I guess, predict they're going to get a kitty coaster of some sort. I'm not going to go much further than that because, I mean, this is a lot of sort of unknowns. But if you're around the area or this is a park you're planning on visiting in the future... This is something to potentially keep an eye on. Probably not going to be a super big addition as they've kind of let on, but uh, might be something to keep an eye on to see what they are getting. Next, we're going to head over to the Netherlands and actually follow a news story that is being reported by Loopings, a Dutch theme park news site that actually we were talking about news sources earlier. Loopings is a great one if you're wanting to follow news in the theme park industry in the Netherlands or in Europe in general. Definitely worth following. But with that being said, they are reporting that Puy du Fo is looking into potentially creating a new park in the Netherlands and that they are looking at building it in a city called Mapel. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the original Puy du Fo park, this is a theme park in France that's very unique. It's not really focused on rides. They actually only have one ride there that is a carousel. But rather than being focused on rides, they instead are more um, focused on historically themed areas and shows with world-class production quality. This is also one of the most visited theme parks in all of Europe. And so, really cool looking. I'm, I'm going to show some footage on here as well so you can see it. It's oftentimes overlooked just because they don't have rides in the theme park and coaster community, Puy du Fo. But a park in the Netherlands has actually been discussed for over a decade the park actually has a partnership with Efteling for their shows, and they actually had two planned locations. Well, not necessarily two planned locations, but uh, locations that were planned in different areas. The first one was going to be by Efteling. That didn't work out, so they tried to do something by Toverland, but that didn't materialize either. Uh, but this is something they've been discussing for a while. And Puy du Fo is expanding. They have a park in Spain that just opened in 2021 called Puy du Fo España. And they have a planned park in China that is expected to open by 2025. So they're definitely expanding. So it's not surprising to see them trying to do this. Um, and if they were to build a park in the Netherlands, they will try to theme it to some extent to tie into the region. Makes sense. And um, it is also noted in the article that a feasibility study will be finished by mid-2023. So if you're interested in this project, this is worth keeping an eye on. Make sure to follow Loopings if you're interested, because I'm sure they'll be pretty much the first ones to get anything out of this, because they're really good with um, finding the sort of information um, and reporting on things in the Netherlands especially. So make sure to keep following them if you're interested in that. And um, it 
would be a pretty interesting project to see if it does materialize another new park in the Netherlands, which they're already doing really well. So um, would be very exciting to see. We are sticking in the Netherlands for our next piece of news, which actually also comes out of Lupians, and that is that they have leaked a new SBF Visa spinning coaster coming to Mondo Verde in the Netherlands for 2023. Now you can go into the link in the description to see pictures. I'm not going to post it on here because the park hasn't officially announced the coaster, but it is pretty much out there leaked, so it is pretty much confirmed. Uh, but as for Mondo Verde itself, this is a very small park. It's more of a actually a gardens park. They have some really impressive looking gardens um, and a zoo. But they also have a few family and kitty rides, less than 10 listed on the website. So it is nice to see that they are getting something like a new roller coaster. That is probably a pretty significant investment for them. And they do already have one coaster, which is Octobahn, which was a relocated Zero Tivoli coaster that opened in 2009, but they do have a few other rides that stood out to me. They have a log flume, and they also have a nautical jet attraction, which is pretty rare from my understanding, so it's really cool they have one of those. They look pretty fun, but outside of that, there's not a whole lot for me to say. If you're in the Netherlands region, this will be a new credit, so that's good, but for the park itself, this is an addition that makes sense for the family audience they're kind of targeting, and if Octobahn does get decent weights, this will definitely help split the weight with that. And I imagine this will give locals with uh, smaller children a reason to return to the park. So it makes sense why they are adding it. And that's pretty much what I have to say for Mondo Verde's 2023 SPF Visa spinning coaster. Next, we're going to go to Universal and talk about what is going on at Universal Creative. And that is that multiple high-ranking executives at Universal Creative, which is the division of Universal responsible for creating the Universal Park lands and attractions, are leaving the company for voluntary early retirement. Some of those leaving include Senior Vice President and Chief Creative Officer Thierry Koo and President Mike Hightower. Now, admittedly, with businesses and things of that sort, I am not the best person to sort of talk about these things, but there were some notes that uh, I wanted to mention in here. And one of those things is that this may seem kind of out of nowhere and random that a bunch of people are leaving the, the company, but this is actually part of an initiative started by NBC Universal where they actually offered employees who were over 57 or had worked for the company for over 10 years an early retirement package. Like I said, it was part of this new initiative they were doing. And insiders who are said to know more, according to the article I read on The Wrap, have stated that Universal does have a well-thought-out transition plan in place. I would certainly hope so, because that's pretty big change. And just to sort of explain what the impact may be here, this is many decades of experience that is now gone from Universal. Uh, Theory Koo, who I mentioned, um, uh, especially he was uh, heavily involved in some groundbreaking ad additions to Universal, such as The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man and The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And other executives were also heavily involved with the same and some other groundbreaking projects. Probably at least one of these people who left were involved with something that has been pretty big that's happened, or pretty much everything probably, that has kind of come out in the last sort of 20 years or so and probably is still coming out. So definitely some big shoes to fill in. We'll see what the effects of this is or if there are any serious effects, um, I guess, probably sometime in the long term future, but certainly something um, interesting and something to monitor probably a long ways from now. But um, I guess we'll we'll have to wait and see how this goes, just because I'm not super familiar with how um, this will impact Universal. Um, but I guess we'll, that's just something that we'll all have to wait and see because I don't think anyone truly knows um, what is going to happen here. Alrighty, our last piece of news will actually take us over to Disney. And this actually comes out of a Variety interview where Avatar director James Cameron revealed that he has pitched the idea to update Avatar Flight of Passage at Disney's Animal Kingdom to the new film Avatar The Way of Water, which he is also directing. So details are pretty scarce, and this is really only a pitch or a concept. And whether this happens or not will most likely depend on how well 
Avatar The Way of Water does. At the time of this recording, we really don't know how it's doing box office wise, but I imagine we'll probably find out pretty quickly here in the near future. But I imagine it should do pretty well. The first film was the second highest grossing film of all time. So I imagine this one will probably do pretty well. And as for what changes we could expect to see, I'm not going to go too much into it because I know there's a lot of people who have not ridden the attraction. I myself haven't, and I will refrain from looking too much into spoilers because I myself don't want to be spoiled. But I think at this point, it's not much of a spoiler to say this is in some way, shape, or form a somewhat screen-based attraction. So what I've seen is people are talking about how certain scenes could be implemented that would complement the way of water. So that might be sort of the changes we're seeing. But like I said, we'll kind of have to wait and see how well the movie does. I'm sure that's going to probably dictate what happens. And then also if they decide if this is something they should pursue in terms of updating the attraction. So that's going to be something to once again sort of keep an eye on. And we'll see where this goes. That will wrap it up for our first episode of Coaster News Roundup. And let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts on the news was, and if you have any suggestions or criticisms for future episodes of the Coaster News Roundup. This was my first episode doing this, and it's still pretty weird like doing sort of a recorded sort of uh, video, so I think I'll get better as time goes on. But like I said, any suggestions or criticisms, uh, criticisms will be appreciated. Also make sure to like, subscribe, and if you want to go above and beyond to support me and the channel and this series, you can share this video on social media or with someone you think would be interested. That would be hugely appreciated and um, would go a long way. With that being said, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time here on Coaster Hour.